Episode 126 of Five Drinks for Midnight. Now the show, we bring the questions, guests bring the drinks. We try to wrap up before midnight. Today we are talking to Adrian Walker, owner and operator of Blue Henry. Before we do, like and subscribe, hit the bells, the whistles, leave a comment if you like the episode. Let's get started. for joining us five drinks or midnight five drinks five questions how are you doing today oh i'm doing great i'm so glad to be here with you thank you so much uh, again we are a huge fan we like i found your guys's stuff uh like at my local <laughs> grocery which is right across the street and i've been in love with you guys ever since so again huge fan thank you so much for joining us I, it really means a lot that you're taking time out of your day to drink with us so i really appreciate that yes that's an easy thing easy request <laughs> excellent uh, i guess you first question is what are we drinking first well we're gonna start with it's just my favorite this is my go-to a gin and tonic um i just like uh the floral a floral gin and we're headed into spring right now it's just the perfect perfect starter for me excellent well cheers Cheers. Lovely. So, of course, we had to varnish. Yeah, I was going to say, this isn't just a normal gin and tonic. I mean, we're, we are garnished with your guys' dried lavender, your juniper, and a dried lime. So, I, you know, as pre preparing for this, and it is, it's March. I'm not sure. It, this will probably air in April, but it's March. Women's History is month so i yep. i was very selective on the gins that um i chose for uh today's episode so um the gin i use for my gin and tonic um it's called sunday gin um, okay. and it's from a distiller in san diego her name is laura johnson so just wanted to give a shout out to her lovely lovely gin and it is, she says it's for making gin and tonics, and she's absolutely right. It's very clean and bright. I love it. Can you tell us a little bit about Blue Henry? Yeah, so um, Blue Henry is about almost six years old now. Um, I used to be a federal employee <laughs> and, um, you know, sort of had that nine to five and said, you know, I want to do something a little more exciting and creative. Um, and just took the time to say, you know, what is it that I really enjoy in life? And I do enjoy a cocktail. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but also, you know, the cocktail industry was just doing amazing things. I mean, we've seen it just explode. You know, there's bartenders yeah. that are just as, you know, well, well known as, um, chefs. Um, and, yeah. you know, there were all sort of creative products being made, but there were also a lot of, terrible products <laughs> being made, things that, you know, just crazy colors and ingredients and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to do something that was all natural, um, beautiful, uh, and that just made it easy for home entertaining and to make your cocktails look beautiful. Um, yeah, they do. You, you, you did an amazing job because this looks absolutely amazing. So <laughs> Yes, and appetizing, you know. The dry food's great. You know, you can... It's aromatic. It's it's beautiful. It just really does add to the cocktail. So, yeah, we're happy. We're happy with it. We're happy. We're making so many people happy with the garnishes. Excellent. And again, everything is hand cut too, which I found really fascinating. And everything, like it's not machines or doing anything. Like you guys are hand cutting everything, which I just think is just that attention to detail <laughs> and just the the care and love that goes into that. I just found that so amazing. Oh, good. And, and again, what? Why dried cocktail, like dried garnishes? 
Well, you know, I I was playing with some other products. I did some candy fruit garnishes. Um, I even did like cotton candy that was infused yep. with different flavors, that sort of thing. Um, and I just kept being asked, do you just do plain dry fruit? And I was thinking, well, I mean, I can do that. I have some machines that can do that. And I just kept being asked more and more. And so you look, you got to listen to your customer <laughs> and see what, yeah. what's doing the best for you. Um, and, and I just, I just really uh, fell in love with, with the drive through. So, and just the versatility of it. And yeah, so that's. Well, and again, the, your, your warehouse or your office just must smell amazing all the time because it just like, Watching the video of you guys hand cutting stuff and then putting them in the machine, it just must smell so great. Like that's got to be. It does. It, you know what? What's everyone who, who visits? That's the first thing they say. It's like, can you bottle this smell? Because it does, it, you're always smelling. Um, but um, unfortunately, those of us who come here every day, we we don't smell it as much. Which you know we've kind of gotten oh, yeah. into it. But yes, the visitors tell us yeah, that the smells are amazing. <laughs> Yeah. And I hope you get a little bit when you open up a box. You could still get a little bit. Of yeah. That. Yeah. I love it. Like, yeah, just opening up the lime for this one. Now my whole office smells like a lime. So this is going to be great. I can tell fruit cocktail almost in here throughout the episode. So it's going to be great. I love it. But um, like you had said before, too, uh, uh, you are an ex FDA executive. Like, how, how like, Going from that to then jumping into actually being, I guess, on the other side, right? Like now FDA comes and visits you and like, how, how's that? Like, So, I mean, yes, I worked at FDA, but to be fair, I was, I was not an examiner. I, I, I didn't, I was not a scientist. Um, I, was, I, was, okay. I was more on the management side, but I, I was working there because I did have a care in public health and health sciences and all of that. So. Yeah, this is all that's important to me. And it actually, I probably am a better person to be reviewed than other businesses because I understand, I understand why the regulations are in place. And so we, we care a lot about um, those inspections and, and making sure that we're checking all the, the boxes. <laughs> and, and again, like you, you guys are now, you're about to celebrate six years, right? Yeah. Like that, that was the. Wow, that's amazing. How's it been? Like, and like, do you think like it would be as successful as it is, or are you no like every day waking up shocked? I, I every day shocked. No, I did not expect that it would become um, as as large as it has, or that I would have as many employees. I thought this would just be something small I do to keep myself busy, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> you no, know, it, it grew and I got addicted and, you know, here I am. Um, but it has, it has not been easy. Uh, but, you know, I like to torture myself with a challenge. So <laughs> I've kept at it. There we go. We have had some highs and lows. Um, we just, um, over a year ago, uh, right before Thanksgiving, not last year, but the year before, um, as we were preparing the transition from our smaller facility to where we are now, we were moving from 1,400 square feet to 9,000 square feet. So we have, wow. Um, we have fire. Oh, no. Um, and we hadn't fully transitioned here. And so that was, that probably was, <laughs> was the hardest, the hardest thing um, that we've had to endure since being in business. Um you know, it was just one of these things. It wasn't any employee's fault. It was just a short and a wire on one of the machines. Um, but it put us out of commission for about a week. And, you know, at that point, I was, I had maybe 12 uh, folks working uh, for Blue Henry. Um, and, you know, it's right before the holidays. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I can't lay folks off. Like, how are we going to do this? Um, so, you know, it was just. It, it was very challenging and it made me, you know, question, do I, should I still be doing this? <laughs> Is this um, but, you know, just took it one problem at a time. Uh, had the staff were tremendous. I didn't lose one staff member during the time that we, awesome. we were out. Um, they were just super supportive and helped to clean up and, you know, move things. And 
um, it, it, they just were amazing. I'm so happy and proud of the staff that I have. Um, but, but yeah, that was, that was challenging. And then the after with all of that dealing with insurance companies and oh, goodness gracious. Um, and it, yeah, was right, I it was right before the holidays, you know, when it's like your biggest sales period. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was hard. We had customers who were waiting on things who had, you know, their own, um, things that they were trying to use our products in as part of their holiday deliveries. But, um, but yeah, we made it through <laughs> and now we're in wow. this lovely space we have now. So, well, congratulations for making it through. That's, I mean, <laughs> like you said, just take, tackle it one problem at a time, mm -hmm. but I mean, How's that going from a fourteen hundred square foot to a nine thousand square? Like that's got to be that's huge. <laughs> yeah, you know, and we're growing into it. We and we still have a little more room to grow here. Which this was, you know, this was our five year plan facility. So um, yeah, it's working out really well for us. Um, you know, we're not bumping elbows anymore. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we're just good. Uh, uh, but it did create a lot of discipline for us that has been helpful here. Like in the smaller facility, as soon as we made something, we had to ship it out. Um, and so mm -hmm. as soon as we made it, we bagged it and, um, you know, put it in its packaging and shipped it out. And that's stuff we still do today. And that's why when you open up your box of limes, you can still smell such a strong aroma because immediately as it's done, we're bagging it. Yeah. I wish internet had smell of vision because again i i'm loving the way like my office smells right now just with the lavender and the juniper and the the limes it just oh it smells great uh your parents are very successful what does that mean to you and as your parents watch you grow this business from scratch wow um so so yes i i do come from good stock <laughs> like, like, <laughs> um, yeah, my, my father was an executive at GM. He was uh, chief of design for at, at um, GM worldwide. Uh, so he okay. was responsible for Corvette, um, you know, Escalade, all, all that stuff. Yeah, he was responsible for it. So uh, my mother, a super accomplished uh, lawyer in um, Detroit, that originally, I mentioned before, originally from Detroit. Um, yes, they have been... Super, super, super supportive. Um, they did initially think I was crazy <laughs> for achieving <laughs> a good government job, right? Like, Adrian, you've got benefits, you have yeah. children, you have a mortgage. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, I've always had a little bit of spark, spunk in me. Uh, um, and, you know, just... And I just, I need a challenge and they know that they, they know that about me. They know that I have a creative side. Um, and, um, anyway, I mean, just in, in their, their own ways, they were trailblazers, right? I mean, my father was the first black designer, car designer at, at GM. Um, my mother was one of, one of very few uh, black female partners at her firm. Like, so, I mean, all of us, you know, that the first is just a generation away, right? So sure. um, anyway, just learn and, and inspired by them and um, want to maybe not be as accomplished in the exact same way. But I think what they've done is just given me the, um, sort of the spirit of drive and like, hey, you, everything's possible for you now. There's so much that, that we have done to allow that for you, to allow the option, the choice. And it's so funny, people ask me like, oh, are you going to pass this business down to your children? I'm like, no, I want to pass money down to my children so that they have the ability to decide what they want to do. They may, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, they're here every once in a while helping me out here. And, and that's more so that they can see fruits of your labor, um, but I want them to have choice. I want them to have options. Um, and so that's, that's what I think my parents gave to me, and that's what I want to give to them. Well, I love it. And I, 
again, like I said, like I, I'm a big fan of your product. Like I came across you guys by accident, and like I like I have it, I have a good chunk of it. So like it just yeah, I'm as a home bartender, I I absolutely love it. It just it's so nice and saves me time from actually buying or pulling out my dehydrator and making my own when I can get your stuff and it's all natural and it's just, it's fucking amazing. So yeah, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that's question one. So super easy. Trains leaving the station. All right. Question two, drink two. What are we drinking? We are drinking a Pimm's cup. Okay. Yes. Another celebration of the spring. All right. Oh, my goodness. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh, I love a Pimm's. Uh, <laughs> when I was um, in college, um, we had a family trip to London. And okay. uh, my brother and I took it upon ourselves to visit multiple bars in London to try and find the best Pimm's Cup. <laughs> Okay. Were you successful? I don't know. <laughs> but it was <laughs> It was super fun. So, yeah. Anyway, I've been a fan of it ever since. Uh, I love it. It's like, you know, tea kind of taste. Um, so, garnish. Super important, right? So, in my yep. pims, I put um, cucumber okay. and um, also fresh cucumber, but also some dried fruit. Pears, apples, and lemon. Oh, very nice. Oh, cheers. And the lemon on top, because that smell is like lovely, lovely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was I was really excited when you put that on your list because I haven't had a Pims in such a long time. And then I was like, Yeah, like that's that's damn good. <laughs> the gin last time, did you use the same gym as gin as well? I didn't. I used um a London like gin, gin, but it's an American okay. gin, but it's made like a more of a London style. Um, and this one is called Ada Lovelace. It's also from California. Um, it's a company that makes um, it's called Great Woman Spirits, and each one of their spirits is named after um, a notable woman in history. Uh, and Ada Lovelace was like like a computer scientist but way before they were computers that's how they describe her just like her mind okay her mind work. um but anyway i i'm enjoying that gin um the other fun ingredient i put in this pims um i'm originally from detroit detroit michigan okay so instead of using ginger ale usually a pims is topped with ginger ale um i yeah. topped it with burners which is like it's a soda. It's like ginger ale. It's a ginger-based soda. But okay. just, if you're from Detroit, people from Detroit, they know this. It is, it's they awesome. know it. Right. <laughs> it's super special. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it Excellent. a lot. All right. So, question two. You guys have tons of garnishes. I mean, there's grapefruit, oranges, lemons, limes. You just showed us some pears, and you have dragon fruit. And then you're even getting into, like, the a little bit of the herbs, but, like, with the lavender and the juniper and stuff like that. So is there a fruit or a vegetable out there that you'd want to work with that you haven't? And, again, not looking for industry secrets or anything. Um. So, okay, people have asked us to try all kind of weird things along the way. Um, and one that we keep being asked about is, um, like, jalapenos, <clears throat> which okay. the staff is just like, no. <laughs> they're, they're completely frightened of that. Um, and so if I can figure out a way to do that without um, – overwhelming the senses in, yeah, yeah. in the warehouse, I'd love to do it just because we get asked about it all the time. Um, another one we've been playing with, and I'm hoping we, we, we're we like very close to getting it where we would be able to um, to market it, um, it's bananas. Because uh, okay. mostly, mostly when you are getting a dry banana, it's been freeze-dried. And it actually loses a lot of flavor when you freeze dry it. 
you're, you're not tasting banana much at all. Uh, but when you dehydrate it, you do. And the smell is like the smell that you get on like limes and lemons and all that. It's just not as beautiful. So we're still okay. around with that one and bananas I would love to be able to do. And then like how long does it take usually to dehydrate something? Because again, I mean, I, I I saw like the video. You guys have like, they're like big, big machines. They're like not home, like <laughs> my round little dehydrator that I have. That, <laughs> no, you know, they're like takes small like cars. nine hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like small cars. They are, they're big. Um, so yes, it depends on, um, a few factors, what type of machine you're using, how much fruit you've loaded into the machine, the more fruit you put in there, the longer it's going to take. Um, so we have older machines, um, that take us about, take about a day for fruit to dry in. Our newer machines, if we needed to, we can dry fruit in four hours in those machines. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, apples and pears, they dry really, really super fast. You can get those done in less than four hours. Is there, a, is there a fruit or a vegetable that you will never work with again? Is there, like, I was surprised you had dragon fruit on there because, again, I would think with, the, like, the skin on it, it would be really hard, but it looked really cool. But <laughs> I, I was just imagining that would be hell to, like, dehydrate. So is there, like, a fruit or vegetable that you're like, nope, never again? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. <laughs> Tomatoes were hard. <laughs> Tomatoes were hard. There was a lot of waste. And and we don't like that. We, we hate that. That's another reason why we hand slice. It's because um, it, it produces less waste than other machines that we've tested. Um, and so, yeah, the tomatoes, it was just too much waste. And we, we felt like we weren't doing the fruit justice. So Tomatoes are mostly like water, right? So like that probably... They probably just disappear in the the dehydrator, so they, and then <laughs> then you're just junk. Yeah, I got gotcha you on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also with like the spices, like getting into the juniper and with the lavender, like are you looking more into like that kind of? Um... Yeah. So uh, one of our initiatives this year is to try is to partner with local farms here in the Maryland area to do uh, more drying of florals um, and herbs. Um, and, you know, it's just the, the quantity that you need is a lot um, in order to get yeah. a small amount. So, so yeah, we're still, we're still working to identify some, some good suppliers for us. But um, particularly, I mean, we're located in Maryland, so there isn't a whole lot of fruit that's actually grown in Maryland, but lots of herbs, yeah. lots of florals. And so if we, that's, that's where we're trying to, to, to do more local. Awesome. And you said too, like you started out with um, like making like cotton candy and stuff like, like, do you still do that? Or like, are you, would you ever go back to like that? Or is that, was that just, you know, a stepping stone to where you are now? It, it, uh, so it's funny you ask, like, you know, our, our original fans are like, when are you bringing it back? When are you bringing it back? And I just have like, horror stories of like trying to ship that in the summer and it just dissolves. Oh, no. yeah. But yeah, but um, you know, we're, we're doing some uh, rimming, rimming glass, rimming salts and sugars, um, starting to do some of those. Just anything that's really, we really try to stay in that shelf stable lane. Okay. Uh, we have some fun stuff that we've done are some um, like infusions. So um where we've infused oranges with bitters. Um, there's, uh, the Sorrel Company makes, uh, I think we're going to do a, a sling later that uses the Sorrel for oh, yep. We've uh, worked oh, yep. with them and did some Sorrel infused oranges. So that kind of stuff is super fun. Um, we've done like mint infused limes. So uh, I'm sure you guys have seen these infusion kits on the shelves of a lot of like home, home stores and things like that. Um, so uh, those companies are always looking for innovative ways to get lots of flavor into those jars. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun playing around with those, too. I mean, I, I mean I'm enjoying my PIMS, but like that, that's question two. So. <laughs> question three, drink three, what are we drinking? So we're doing a... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
We're doing a Mine looks thing. completely different. It's okay. It's okay. It's still blue. Yours still looks gorgeous. It's properly, right. properly garnished. So we are doing um, a salty dog. Okay. I've a, a non-traditional glass, I know, but um, so this this gin that we're using on for this one is um, called Wild Roots, and it's a fortified okay. gin. It's got cucumber and grapefruit in it um, from um, a distillery in Oregon. It's a couple, not completely woman-owned, but it's a couple, so um, they do a, a couple of... Um, Infused vodkas and gins. This one is a lovely one. Um, so it's that, and um, I used a grapefruit seltzer rather than grapefruit juice. Okay. And um, I'm using one of our newer brimming salts and sugars. Um, this one is a strawberry peppercorn. Oh, very nice. Um, so it's a, it's a sugar salt, so it's got both, but it's got that salt that you need. For a salty dog. Um, and then, of course, oh, right. I garnished with our um, grapefruit half wheel. There we go. Well, Still cheers. Up. Cheers. I hope this weather changes really soon because, uh, yeah, this is just, these these are cocktails that you should be sitting outside on the porch with. Like, yes. This is just absolutely amazing. Yes. And then, you know, got mm. make sure you lick your rim. Absolutely. <laughs> mm. I am. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's so good. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, question three. It's a, it's a two-parter. But, from our social stalking, we found that you are the hostess with the mostess. And you love throwing parties. So, for you... What makes a great party? Okay. Well, gosh, so many different components. So, you got to have the best music, right? The music has got to be, um, got to help with the mood you're trying to set. So, um, if, you know, you want things upbeat, you got to have your upbeat music. If you want to be able to hear and have conversation, lower it down a little bit. Um, and, uh, What's, what's interesting, like, um, particularly if you're trying to do a lot of conversation, sometimes it helps to play music that everybody is very familiar with. Because then, yeah, anyway, people love it. And then they like to, they talk about the memories that the com that the music has, brings up and all that. Um, so music's important. Got to have good food. Um, and so... Uh, I like to keep things easy. I may not make everything from scratch, but present it in a way where it looks um, very appe appealing. Same way I care about my cocktails, I care about the presentation of the food. Um, and then, who, you know, who's invited? Yeah, I can have a good mix. Some people who know each other, some people who don't know each other. Um, yeah, and, and don't make it overcrowded. That's not nice. People want to be comfortable with um, be able to mix and mingle. So many people there, they feel like, oh, I, know, I didn't get enough time to talk to you. I didn't get enough time to talk to you. So, yeah. Okay. So then, because uh, that, that was going to be a, a follow-up question. Like, do you invite just everybody that you know, but you said have a mix of people. Like, what's the ratio? Do we have like a 60-40 new people versus like old people, like people we know kind of thing? Or like how... How, how, what, like, how many new people should we invite to our party? Always to be a couple of new people who, who've never been, okay. never, never met so many friends, never um, been to your home, that sort of thing. Yeah, you gotta mix it up and you gotta meet new people because otherwise we kind of get a little stale, right? We're sitting around the yeah. same folks all the time and the same thinking. And, um, yeah, you gotta meet new people who are doing, have different adventures in their life, hear about. So, Okay. And then, because um, uh, from what we read, you always got stuck being the, the bartender. You got always stuck making the drinks, which I find myself doing that quite a bit, a lot as well. How do you navigate that? Because then I find that I'm too busy always just making drinks and not talking to people. 
how like should we hire a bartender or like how do how do you navigate that? Well, hiring a bartender, if you're if you've got over 30 people, you need to have a bartender. You don't need to be trying to do that yourself. That's too much. Like like you said, you'd be doing it all night. And you'd be the one searching, trying to go find the ice and more glasses and all, <laughs> all that. So so yes, over 30 people we gotta hire a bartender. But Less than that, you got to batch your cocktails. Yep, and you know, you can Google how to do that um, online. Not difficult, and people can help themselves when you when you batch your cocktails. People can help themselves. So, yeah. And then, of course, yeah. beer and wine, again, also very friendly for um, cocktail parties because people also can serve themselves the beer and the wine. Excellent. <laughs> and then... Our negative on what what do you consider the biggest faux pas of a party? Like in your mind, like what what is a party no no? Party no no. Oh, is there a party no no? I don't know. I feel like people do something crazy at a party, and it, it just makes a fun story the next day. I I don't know. But yes, you should always bring something. Um, even if it's like your bestie. I mean, call her up and say, you know, do you need some ice? I'll bring you some ice or whatever. We'll talk to you been to multiple times. But yeah, you should bring something. And then uh, how do you feel about Irish goodbyes? Say Like, yes, save me some time or is it, no, you should actually say goodbye to everybody? And yeah. um, I try and make my rounds. Uh, but okay. you can't always, and you know, sometimes people you don't want to interrupt or whatever. Um, but always say goodbye to the host or host host. That, I think that is uh, always bring something, always say goodbye, and <laughs> look if you make an ass out of yourself, people are going to talk about you the next day. So <laughs> don't fun. don't be a jerk. But yeah, it's fun. It's, it's fun stories. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there you go. You're just making stories. Are you a host? Do you like to host? I do. I, I, I guess my, yeah. I, I think my love language is feeding and drinking with, be, like, giving people drinks and feeding them is, is my. Uh, yeah. That's that's like my love language. Yeah. Like I think, always making sure like when people come over, like the first thing is I always have their drink, waiting for them. So when you come visit. I know that I'll have a good gin waiting for you. So there'll be a good gin cocktail now that we've drank together. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's just the, yeah. Like, uh, I, I cannot remember people's names to save their name, life, but, like, I, I know what you drink. So, like, that, <laughs> like I can meet people at a bar and just be like, oh, yeah, that guy is, like, like a rusty nail or a penicillin or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, no. and just be like, yeah, that, but remember his name? No way in hell. Like, my brain just is like, oh. Same. I'll remember people's stories, um, but may not remember their name. But I'll remember your story. I remember where I met you. All of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, same. What you were talking about in your love language, like you know, being stuck making cocktails. Yes, but I don't mind doing it uh, because I, yeah. I love to see the enjoyment uh, from my friends. They enjoy something I make and. And you know, yeah, exactly. And like, well, I'm enjoying this, so cheers again. <laughs> cheers. Question four, drink four. What are we drinking? We are drinking a sling, which um, right. has sorrel liqueur in it and gin. Also, I, this one leans a little bit more towards summer, I think, because of the pineapple okay. in it. Um, but um, I love it. So soil liqueur is um, an island thing made with uh, hibiscus. And this one I paired with um, gray well gin, which um, is from California. So also very bright citrusy yep. um, flavors. So I understand gray well is a favorite of yours. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, their gin is so fun, like such a beachy feel to it. So, yeah, I thought it was perfect to pair with this. So, Excellent. here we go. Yeah, like their ingredients and your ingredients, like they they all, yes. So, this one, cheers. Yes, cheers. Oh, the smell on this, 
like all the sort of spicy notes in it. Oh, I love this. So um, I um, did pineapple, which um, there's pineapple juice in this cocktail. So that was an obvious choice. Um, but I also use our um, sorrel silk oranges as garnish in this. Okay. Sort of, they are beautiful, like bright red flavor when you color. See how the sorrel sort of um, dyed our oranges, a beautiful color. Yeah, so. Very, there. very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I just used your, again, your just beautiful pineapple garnish, which is just, again, a big, beautiful flower. Like, it just looks absolutely amazing in, in a drink. So, thank like, you. Uh, thank you. All right. So, question four as we're kind of wrapping up our drinks, you know, we've, we've, we've talked a little trash about partying. We've, we find out, you know, what we hate tomatoes. We got your history. <laughs> Question four, what's the future hold? What's next for you guys? Like I said, we're really excited about trying to like double down on local stuff here in Maryland, working with some Maryland farmers. So hopefully that comes together uh, pretty quickly for us and we'll see some products in the fall. Um, right now, you know, we're just um, growing into our space, trying to um, get <laughs> as much business as we can to to support uh, such the, the expansion. Uh, so, yeah, we're, um, you should be able to see us in more retail locations um, across the country. Uh, we're in a, a, a lot of uh, smaller specialty stores, like the store that, that you found us in. Yep. Um, and uh, now we're trying to um, see ourselves in, in um, more mom and pop specialty stores, but also some larger liquor retailers. So. Um, that's, that's what's, what's up for, for Blue Henry. Awesome. And also, again, if you can't find it at your local, you guys are also on Amazon. So like that, I mean, that is. Yeah. Yeah. We had, we've had a fun, fun ride with Amazon. Um, we were super lucky just by happens, happenstance, um, decided to launch on Amazon right before COVID, you know, we, who knew COVID was coming, but happened oh, to yeah. be a really good thing for 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 the business because everybody was making crafting cocktails at home and trying to replicate that experience that they would have at their bar at home uh so so yeah a lot of people found us found us then um and have been uh, long-term fans um we actually get a lot of business sales on amazon so more than most um most sellers on Amazon, I think about 30% of the okay. sales on Amazon are, are to businesses, right? Bars and restaurants who are buying it for the convenience that, you know, we talked about earlier than not having to dry the food themselves. Well, so. again, so since, you know, you, you brought up Amazon, uh, how does it feel to have your face on a billboard out in front of the, uh, the Wizards Arena? Let me tell you, Amazon... <laughs> They, they're, they are, I mean, they're another company with lots of resources. So, you know, but look, they, they want to tell brand stories and I, I get it. You know, I don't think that most people know that, you know, I think it's a, a very large number percentage of the sales on Amazon are actually small businesses like myself. Right. So they came, they descended on our our new location, maybe like a month after we have fully moved in. <laughs> so okay. like, we're going to come, we're going to film, we're going to take pictures. Just want to tell your story. It's going to be a lot. Don't worry. But, but it's going to be a lot. And I'm like, okay, well, I show up <laughs> here and we start early. We, we, you know, we're here about 6 a.m. I get here. There are already cars, lots of cars, cars out of here, tons of people. <laughs> I don't know, they must have like 70 people here for like a film crew and all this whatever, whatever. So that was like amazing. But we had so much fun with them. They were so nice. They were nice to the staff who were here. And we were we were in production because they wanted to film us pro producing. And we actually ran a few batches that day. Nice. <laughs> but, so that was fun. And so then they go away. So they send and they disrupt your day and, and then they go away. And then then they're like, okay, Adrian, we're going to roll out this commercial. Um, and oh, by the way, we're doing a billboard um, in the middle of downtown D.C. 
And it wasn't just that. They also did a billboard, like, just um, maybe a mile away from the facility, just to say, like, hey, you, look what you have in your community. Uh, you know, that someone is, is doing doing this and selling on Amazon and making, you know, beautiful products. And so, yeah, that was fun. And it was <laughs> real. Like, gosh, you know, I, I literally was just cleaning up, cleaning up a fire months ago. And now I'm sitting here gazing um, at myself. <laughs> I still want to do it. Like, oh, my gosh. And I took, took my kids down there so they could look and see. And just, you know, it's like a, a dream. You asked earlier, like, did I, could I have imagined where, where, this, um, where this company went? And no, I could not have imagined that I'd be on a billboard in the middle of downtown D.C. No, I could not imagine that. But it was wonderful, and it's just sort of reassuring um, that um, we're doing good things. We really are. Uh, you know, we, we have a great product, um, doing great things in the community, being able to, um, you know, hire folks who, um, particularly like when we were growing right after COVID, we were hiring folks from the restaurant industry who um, were otherwise unemployed. That was great. You know, we've been able to give folks a second chance who have made some mistakes earlier in their lives, but now are ready to, you know, be fully committed, you know, citizens and just, I don't know, it's just been the, the stories of the, the staff, and, um, a lot of that is overwhelming and you just feel glad, glad and proud um, to just be a good business owner working for the community. So anyway, it's, it's been amazing. amazing ride, amazing ride. You get people calling you being like, why is your giant mug on a billboard? Like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Especially like right here by the facility. Cause I only live 15 minutes from home. Right. So I've got a lot of friends in the area. They're like, Hey, you know, I'm just driving. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm it's a little embarrassing, but uh, no, it's great. It's great. It's great. So yeah, it, it's, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. How long was it up? Was it up for How like the month and a half? <laughs> a long time. Uh, like two months. I'm like, oh my God. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, I, I almost like the one nearby, I was like taking different routes into the city so I wouldn't have to drive <laughs> past my face every day. Like, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I went down, it's because I, of course, I had to go a couple times. You know, had went one, one time and then come bring some other folks to come see it. But the first time I went down there, um, so right outside of the um, of the arena, oftentimes there are like you know street performers. There's these kids out there, and they were singing and dancing. They were great. They were fun. I'm just sitting there watching them and. But they're literally right in front of the billboard. And I'm sitting there watching them, uh, yeah, you know, clapping, and they were done. And the guys, the little kids, are, I don't go up to the kid, and, and I point <laughs> to the billboard. And he looks, and he looks back, <laughs> and he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, it was fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I love it. Well, there we go. That's question four. Beautiful drink. Cheers to you. What are we drinking? I'm calling it a gin old fashioned. Um, All right. And so I'm using a barrel, a barrel aged gin. Okay. There are a number of them, but this one is my favorite. It was introduced to me by a really good friend of mine, um, and <clears throat> Bar Hill Tomcat. And, okay. um, of course, well, my ice has melted a little bit, but I did have a really pretty um, globe ice in here. Well, that's what I was like, um, mine looks like it's pure water, but that just means that I have really good ice in there. Um, so. You do want a, a nice big cube when you're doing an old-fashioned, right? Because yep. you, you want to be able to slice yes. it. And I garnished it with our um, bitters infused um, oranges. So me too. 
and they are yummy in all their wrong, right? So you don't really have to add bitters to your old fashioned. You can just drop one of those in and yeah. they're lovely. All right. So question five comes down to the flip of the whiskey Wednesday coin. You can flip it. You can spin it. You can do whatever you want. Okay. You don't have to answer. The coin gives us the answer. Oh, you you do not have to answer. So yeah, one side of the coin says fuck yeah, one side of the coin says fuck no. So it's a yes or no question. Okay, okay, okay. I got yeah. the coin. There we go. All right. So question five: Is a cocktail complete if it doesn't have a garnish? I don't have to answer that. I gotta let the coin. Yeah, I mean, you can. The coin can answer, but I mean, you can answer as well. But so a cocktail has to have a garnish. So. There we go. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a requirement. It's a requirement. Of course. No, I mean, look, I mean, it's there for a purpose. I know people, are, a lot of times people just toss it or whatever, but it is there for a purpose. Beauty is important. Yeah. We we, um, we eat, we drink, we're using all of our senses. Beauty is important, but so is the smell. So is the the flavor that it adds it's all important and there's so much work that's put into a garnish and when i see people just toss it i'm like oh it's like, <laughs> somebody just gave you a special treat like they went the extra effort to give you the special little treat yep. on your on your on your drink and so yep. yes yes and a garnish is important all right but so we're gonna, right. are we gonna let the coin decide no no i think i think you answered it <laughs> i think we're good okay but I mean, you can flip. You can flip the coin and just let me know if okay, it says okay. "fuck yeah" gonna, or not. I mean, I'm gonna spin it. I don't know if you can't see it, but right. I'm gonna spin it. You better answer right. If you can't see it, I'm gonna. It does actually say "fuck yeah," a garnish. Yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good job, coin. And that is five drinks down. Five questions answered. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Now that we've drinking together, we are family. So. Yes. Again, you need anything, please let me know. I, I Again, I'm, again, super fan here. I, I wish you nothing but success. So cheers to you, oh, and cheers thank you for joining us. You. This has been so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. And I can't wait till we drink together in person. So cheers. All right. See ya.